Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm OP and in today's episode we'll be going over some of the best highlights from all of the LCK spring matchups of the day. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the action. Shroomaker is definitely showing that uh, if you do unbind the soul, uh, you can definitely just uh, always land those charms. Lucid's coming on in here. Doran does have that Mega Nar coming up, but it's a really good avoidance of that wallop. And okay, Nature's Grasp comes down. CC to assist just to go through the CC. And there's first blood. Still, Zekker is going to rotate in. And I don't think this fight is over just yet. Still, he gets underneath the turret with Showmaker uh, in this trade. Uh, we see Zekka moving over already. He needs to be here yesterday if he wants to prevent this play. Well, uh, Narbar is not in a great position and the CC is just chained to high heaven. Zekka moving on in now as Showmaker wants to land this charm, but Zekka is going to ult his way out. They do take some plate gold on the way through here as D+. If you walk up, uh, Liable just get a heavy trade pumped into you. And especially with the fact that we're seeing Lucians go this shiv, it becomes really difficult, so D-plus don't even opt to contest the Dragon, they go towards a Herald instead, and you can see aiming in Kalan's position, like Viper's permanently up in the lane. Not able to do anything, and so now the next fight is going to be dictated by Harmon Life Esports. As now Peanut, he'll press the Nature's Grasp button and now look for an opportunity to go in. Kellen is going to the Kales himself. That is actually the right call here, as Lucid happily able to tank things up. Now Showmaker moving in on the flank angle. Cease and assist comes down. They found their target as Zekker is in trouble, but he's ulting. He is going to get himself out. And D-plus now have to work out who else they can kill. Peanut might be the target they opt in for, but he's just going to Bramble Smash Flash, and they're able to take down Kingen. Humble Beast was playing this out so incredibly well. Orbit Deception flies down. Moonlight Vigil is decent. But it is not quite good enough as Showmaker looks for the backline. He finds Viper, who then dashes forward. It's aiming that's able to cut him down, but he dies himself. It's a double, though, in the end. As now Lucid going down low and Doran getting some revenge here onto DK. The Nah does come through, and it's a triple. If there's there's like an agreement from both teams, we're going to be 5v5ing as, okay, Tidal Wave going to be avoided, and now the turret just goes down. Delight just booped over the wall. Is now Viper by himself. He's going to get taken down oh! so incredibly low, but that's Still a massive ulti from Zekka. The answer is still there for D+, though, as Lucid just punches the Lucian. They're making collecting some cinders as the Drake is going to get picked up here. And if Harmon Life Esports don't like this, they can just back away, but it looks like they're not going to do so. As Showmaker taken down, that is going to be a huge cease and assist onto Viper, but the ulti into the back line is just as good. Both of the carries just immediately wiped out. Delight in trouble, but Kingen has no damage. He's not going to be able to get this one done. It's Doran able to lock down the last remaining kill here in the river. They'll grab themselves an Infernal Soul, and Zekka, congrats on the POG, man. Broke a shield, at least, uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, Lucy. He might just die. Yeah, he may. Cease and assist going to come through here as there is the knockup onto Showmaker. Wow. He misses the charm and just gets chopped up by Zekka. Not sure about this one, and it feels a little bit like D Plus have ran out of steam in this I moment. I don't know really what was uh, going it's on there. Zoning ult, zoning ult. Yeah, definitely zoned. Did a bunch of zoning. As now, the ultimate going to come through here from Peanut as well. There's the flash twisted advance. Really wants to take down aiming. Not going to be able to do so just yet. Lucid, very tanky, is able to take out Viper. And now Zekka, he's at full health, so he's an absolute monster. It doesn't matter that they've lost the Lucian, because they still have this Yone, who is just so incredibly huge. Three dead on the side of D+, and so these inhibitors are sure to follow. And maybe, with this Baron buff, they're going to be able to push through for even more. Aiming is still up, but I just don't know whether he's going to be able to do too much here. Showmaker showing back up again, though. That should be enough. As look at all these cannon minions. There are five! Yeah, lining up to take down these turrets. They're going to they be able to take the first one as uh, Peanut. It's going to be difficult for him to be able to get out. As Tidal Wave just sails by majestically. It's a great charm to connect there as Kingen, not quite as tanky as he otherwise could. Oh, wait, maybe he is. Never mind, he is. That's, that's a bit ridiculous that he has been targeted so much. As Showmaker wow. not able to find him. The sidestep just gorgeous as the Tidal Wave almost takes down Showmaker here. He makes it to the fountain. It's good bubble on to Kingen to stop that follow up. Aiming is still at full health though. Has decent guns for this one as well as into the back line goes Zekka. Doesn't find the Aphelios, but still able to cut down this Udia Peanut. Not a lot left in the tank though as far as that health bar. So D plus I think might be able to keep this Nexus turret alive. Just cascading up these lanes. 
as King, and he's not going to be able to hold onto it by himself. Still, he's teleporting in. They're going for the flip as now Lucid wants to get over the wall. He is going to be able to do so, but there's another two-man ulti from Zacho, who finds yet another angle. Aiming now, having to deal with Doran, will get stunned up, not into the wall. Thrown around like ragdolls, and D-plus, they went for the last-ditch effort, but it is only Lucid left standing, and Pfeiffer gets his final revenge. That is going to be the Nexus Tower falling down as well as Doran wants to get out of this game as quickly as possible. Look at these supers. And that is going to be that. They even take the Elder. Not Just an Ari is a pretty powerful combo. Yeah, I mean, there's so much dive threat on this composition. Combo foul. Still going to be a decent advantage for Aiming and Kellen as Doran continuing to have a rough time as King and just going to slice him up. That's a solo kill. Welcome back, King. It's good to have you here. And uh, Doran is, yeah, he's just having a rough week this time around as Lucid is going to be able to secure his uh, Raptors. Really? Uh, misses on to Viper. Bit of adrenaline, you could imagine. As now Lucid gets the flash off. That's just not spell shieldable. They chain the CC gorgeously. And Peanut is just going to be eradicated. And now, is this another one? King in as the Q is going to miss. Will we have a slice and dice? The answer? This was a while ago as well. Yeah. I feel like there, there is just some people in the depths who just have this is what they play every game, and that's yep. what they do. As there is the flash forward, Paranoia comes down. Peanut looking for some revenge, and he'll get it. As now, once again, a little bit of aggression onto Showmaker, but this time he lands the seismic shove, and Zekka not going to be able to find too much into this 1v1. And Humble Life Esports doing it again. Uh, this is going to be second Drake going on over. It's going to be a cloud and an ocean. And we'll see what soul it's going to be. Mountain soul here, though. So I don't think that they're going to be able to defend this turret. Um, yeah. Shock horror, I know. Uh, but Kingen is going to be able to just take that one down there. Uh, still has Call the so is otherwise going to be fine. Peanut going to be spotted on this ward as in comes Lucid. Peanut can, of course, get out the spell shield, but this is going to be dangerous. Great crash down from Delight. As the paranoia comes on through, there's the slice and dice from King, and though gets on top of Peanut, but it's a trade of junglers. And meanwhile, Doran just trying to get back to the rest of his team. Unfortunately, King, he finds a big cull the meek, but it is not enough to lock down a kill, and the crocodile is turned into a handbag right when the Drake has spawned. 30 seconds, he does have to win. Uh, where Hunter like these Oh, oh, oh dear. He is going to try and get himself out of here. That is a decent playback. The hook was okay too, but he is just dead. Yeah. Viper getting a third kill. Um, certification, I think, is being threatened right now. Is that tiny Vault Breaker enough to get Lucid out of the way of the charm? So he's going to be all right. Well, as D plus being able to get King into the right position, stay grouped up, get the target selection working out as Delight on a good flank angle for this Magnet Storm. They are grouped. There's the paranoia to start this one off. As in he goes, finds the backline, finds four. That's going to be the mountain soul as well. Delight taking a lot of damage, but aiming as well, getting chunked down. All out from Dor, and he wants to be able to kill the Jinx, and he does so. That is the job done. The hook going to come through from Kellen, but he is just going to die immediately afterwards. And D-plus, I mean, they gave it an honest crack, but it just didn't work. They start losing the fight. There's no running away and getting everyone out. You just start losing members left and right with a reset potential, with a chase down from all the mobility. Oh, Showmaker. Yeah, Zekka is going to find the charm there. Absolutely gorgeous. He had to go in, try and find some sort of attempt at a pick or a steal or something, but uh, just not to be the case. Is now King going to give him the thumbs up. And he knows he's not going to be able to get in there. It is still going down pretty low as Lucid. Can he get the steal? The answer is no. Peanut blocks that one down. And now Kingen does find a huge cull the meek, but I just don't know whether it's going to be enough. There's the first kill, though, for aiming. There's Peanut taking a lot of damage. The zap connects onto Viper, and that will slow him down. But Doran is just a brick wall. And Zekka, he has not a lot of mana, but he still has enough to get himself over this wall. And Viper is going to help lock down Lucid. Aiming now trying to... Is he doing any damage? The answer's no. Uh, and it's a double as the ace comes in and Hummer Life Esports. I have a feeling we are moving towards a 2-0 here, Ox. Yeah, uh, I think that looks like the direction we're going. This you did be mention that, uh, you know, the script writers had gotten a little bit lazy towards the end of the season. Um, yeah. And I didn't want to believe you. And so have I, because I mentioned that yesterday and I mentioned it again today. I know. I my narratives. Well, there's a cease and desist. Zekka is taking a lot of damage. There's Dominus involved as well. So 800 gold going over to the Renekton and now Peanut could be in trouble. 
is going to try and fear Lucid, not actually going to come on through as Showmaker is just surfing his way down, doesn't find the flick back onto Peanut, who is just walking, 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 walking. Super Mega Death Rocket going to come on through there as well as Lucid is going to get a little bit scared. He was very tanky, my goodness. But uh, they do manage to take him down. So that is going to finesse. It was just, I have this champion that has this utility and I'm going to utilize it. And it's happening once again, although now, is uh, in potentially a little bit of trouble. Doran does have access to the anti-CC. That is going to get him out of the flick. Hook going to connect this time around, though. He needs an extra few of those. And he is going to get thrown back now. Cease and desist as Doran once again going to get caught out. But the same thing's going to happen to Kingen. But he gets to turn into a giant angry crocodile. So it's just going to be the ultimate that he invests. And now, four versus five. For this Elder fight, Hummel Life Esports, I think they still need to try and go for something. Paranoia is still up and available, and Viper is still absolutely terrifying. There's a Magnus Storm into the back line. As you can see, the Jinx is the main character of this one, but he is going to get Fee, and Peanut gets on top of him. And it's a 4v5, guys, and still Hummel Life Esports are winning. Viper is going to take down Lucid, and it is an absolute disaster once again for D plus Kia. This Elder is going to belong to Hummel Life Esports and Showmaker can only watch. And even then, he may have to do so from the death chamber as Peanut looking to get his revenge after a thumbs up is thrown his way. Yeah, so well played. Um, and even I want you to watch Kellen and the, the play he makes in the team fight itself. We weren't going to see it. No. You, but he did this fantastic play, disengaged Delight yeah, perfectly. To pick up uh, all the parts of Exodia, but we do have them back to back in this one. Damage dealt even between both Zekker and Viper. Both of them having great games. And I think I might be a... If, if I was a, a, a voter, yeah. I might be a Boom Boom Damage voter. Yeah, could, could well be this game. Oh dear. Maybe I'm media as well. Maybe we're all media deep down. Deep down. Sometimes you just see the big number. You see Viper playing Zeri. You're like, yeah, my brain likes this. You see that? Yeah. You no, know, my brain's like, yeah. And that was also uh, pretty massive in that particular moment. It's all oh, goodness. The Wrath of the Dragon coming on in here as Peanut is going to take down Kellen. There is the kill for Viper, who's looking for even more. Peanut grabbing himself a double in this fight at the same time as Delight is <laughs> having, a, having a fun time throwing himself into the fountain. They'll take down these Nexus turrets. <laughs> he just wanted to kill Aiming one last time. He really did. Uh, just being the cavalry as there's the flash on forward. It's a triple in the end, I believe, for Peanut. And Showmaker actually having a bit of a, a grin on his face at the end of that one. Nothing. Yep, and you know, you may think, oh, it's Lucian Nami for the Nami to buff, buff the Lucian. No. Carrier will buff Faker, and then Owner and Zayas, their job is to hold people still. Yes. So you can hit them. That's how it's going to work, all in unison. Um, Dear Rex. Uh, of uh, Quantum Freaks before they decided that more dragons is the way that we win. And that's uh, that's how it sort of worked. Sponge coming on over to help DRX out as Ona thinking about finding an opportunity. And there is a fantastic Magnus Storm into a double bubble from Carrier. Kumiyushi now dashing in. Teddy explodes as Faker's ultimate goes off. And that is first blood for the Lucian. And Faker able to pick one up on the back end of that one as well. And DRX and change. He's going to be the lead here is now Sponge looking for Faker. He's just going to wander northward, but yeah, who is going to be able to find that angle? There is a twisted advance in, and the explosive charge is going to be enough. Yeah, who locks that one down? So there's the first kill for DRX as Rascal closing the distance onto Zayas as well. He finds himself a gold cup, but still will be culled. Don't know whether he's necessarily the main. Just free soul uh, point. Yeah, no real contest, and now they're trying to put the Herald down mid. They succeed, but it's. Difficult to really follow up and... Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, well, Teddy is just going to charge the turret. Let's see how he's going to do it. There's a feather storm That gets him up there as Ona was kind of baited into this one. He will go down as the first kill, but Sponge is traded off as well. Destiny's going to come forward and Rascal... Yeah, he is just dead. It's a double kill for the Twisted Fate. Azaeus not finished just yet. He could see some low health bars. Moving in, they do spot the fact that the Tristana is down here. Is now Faker, not going to find too much. Ulti is going to be thrown over as Yahoo just dives on in. There's the flash forward. Quickness comes down, and Faker is just going to be eliminated. That's a kill for Yahoo. So something on the other side of the rift here is T1. Um, speaking of the other side of the rift, they're going to see two people in the bottom lane and say it's Baron in time. Yeah, and you know, essentially with the Twisted Fate there, they have 280 carries, so 
It is going down fairly quickly. Extremely quickly. For 21 and a half minutes, kind of ludicrous. But now Sponge is making his way forward. Tidal Wave is going to get a lot of value as the Feather Storm comes out. And now the Magnet Storm is going to catch Teddy, and he is just obliterated. Gumiushi, so much damage as he's dashing after the Renekton as well. They kept the Baron leashed, and they're going to look for that one now as T1. The foot is never coming off the gas this game. Yep, yeah, and the thing is, I actually like the play DRX for went on the bot side. Oh, you gotta try and get something, but oh my god, okay. Uh, there's three at 22 minutes. Interesting, we often see like... Okay, ulti gonna connect onto Sponge here. The unending despair is named pretty well here for DRX right now, but Sponge is gonna be able to keep himself alive, even able to walk back and get a bit of extra health from that redemption, but it's not gonna save this inhibitor turret. T1 going to be able to break that one open. They've got five uh, Void Grubs as well, and so the little mites help them take down these structures, so they are going to be able to break open. On this point, you got such a deficit, I think it's very hard to expect them to win this, but... Yeah. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, oh. Teddy taking a lot of damage. Yeah, running low on the... wasn't even on the screen. It's so unfair. It's now reacted. Oh, my God! Rascal taking so much damage! Does get a decent amount of uh, health back with the Cull Meek, but he is still really dead. And Kerry now chasing after Faker, who's running real quick. Nature grasping at T1, but Faker is just going to say, no, thank you, Mr. Tree. And uh, Sponge is going can. Yep, and sort of opting just to peel away, take the objective. They can keep pressuring, you know, using these sideways really effectively. Often it's Zayas pushing the wave in, the rest of them will take over. And DRX probably just hoping they can go to game two at this point. Yeah, and the inhibitor turret going to be taken down. Inhibitor will follow there as well. Yes. Troll Ward in the pit, though, for DRX. There's at least that. Azaeus is just oh. splitting. So this could be sold and... No, it's not. So the soul is... Okay, never mind. Still up and available. I thought the Dragon's Health Bar was going down very yeah. low, but that was a Control Ward, so Okay, so Rascal's actually come back here, but I think he loses that 1v1 pretty hard. Yeah, it's a little bit of a worry here. As Faker is going to be pushed back into DRX, he will be taken down first off as Pleta somehow survives for Sponge. Not going to be so lucky. And yeah, that 1v1 like you were talking about, the Twist Fate's going to take that. As Bubble going to be avoided, but that is Featherstorm now on cooldown for Teddy. He has to be very, very careful as Yahoo diving forward, trying to find Gumiushi, who is just going to flash his way out. The Destiny going to be utilized as back in base. They're trying to defend against this Twisted Fate, and Yahoo, he's going to be put into the Bubble Prison. Owner is going to take the soul. Pleta will die as these cards do find him, and he will take down the Nexus. T1, an absolute flattening of DRX in game number one. Yeah, and a very rough enough for them to translate this into a win is a different question. Yeah, for me, it actually does look like at least DRX has a time of the game where they can fight, right? They're going to hit a great mid-game spike that they can try to fight around, maybe get themselves the second lane. Flip the entire game on a level three dive. Yeah, and Teddy, see, trying to make this one happen. There is the crash down on top of Gumiushi, who does eventually flash. That is going to keep him alive as now Owner is making his way in and Sponge is extraordinarily low. The Bramble Smash does push him away, but they're looking to turn it. Flash out from Owner is Teddy. Oh, he oh. doesn't find the double tap. And there's the flash out from Carrier. Everyone is so incredibly low as Pleta, he really wants to do it. But it's just not going to happen. Look at this, sub 100 health for both of these bottom laners. And Owner can't do anything about it because he's also excruciatingly low. Yep, the Hex Flash over as Sponge makes his way in. There it is! The crash down to interrupt it as well, but Teddy is also going to die. So it's a one for one, and uh, First Blood does go over to Sponge getting aggro. Maybe Teddy just cleans up both Guma and Carrier. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, obviously didn't plan out that way. Oh, more Hex Flash value. Here we go, Sponge. Start charging it up as Jonas Strong turns it off, and there we go! The crash down on top of him, straight into the bubble, and Teddy He's going to be able to pick up a kill this time around. This is what I'm talking about. You know, a good Rich here, Exa Prime, that they'll be able to sustain back up with uh, Platter's healing. But that health is still low now, and they are doing the Dragon. Sponge should just be able to secure this. Yep. Well, better and Strike comes in. That's going to lock that one down. So, Ona in position. Doesn't actually do too much about it. Does Yahoo really good trade onto Faker here, landing the charm? Yeah, there there is an MSI coming up, so we could uh, utilize that one. But it might happen just here. But uh, Gumiushi is going to try and stop that as the heal does have to be utilized. You mentioned the ba barrier from earlier. That is uh, on cooldown, but actually an even trade in the end as Teddy just trades for the uh, the culling. Yep. Uh, oh Ooh, yeah, tidal wave actually going to be utilized here as Carrier is in so much trouble. Piercing Light comes down. That is going to be Teddy locking down the kill onto the Lulu, and no Rel required for that one, really. Looking really good. 
as Volution Demption has been pretty ridiculous as Zayas just stepping out of these sweet spots beautifully on the Twisted Fate. Not going to step out of that one as I say it, but that's a Caster Curse. And those are real. Uh, Jat reminded me of it uh, earlier on today. As Ona sidestepping really nicely, crashed down on top of him, but there's the charm to come on through from Yahoo. Ona did utilize the Twisted Fate. Uh, sorry, the Twisted Advance quite well, but now it's Sponge that's in trouble. And Faker, he delivers a package, has to flash out immediately, but the Tidal Wave not going to be enough there as the Maokai picks up the kill, and Teddy has to cleanse and flash to get himself the heck out of this one. Somehow, T1 keep themselves alive. I think has a lot more value. Yep. And in fact, I think Carrier has gone for Dreammaker more than a lot of our other supports, uh, if I remember correctly, is. All right, Ona is going to get a Magnet Storm out and is just going to take a massive amount of damage and die. Um, yeah, that's pretty good work here for DRX. Not a lot to fight for. Whole card onto Rascal. Yeah, they, they catch him isolated and also when... Ooh. Oh, not going to get the sweet spot on the second Q and may just get autoed to death. There we go. Uh, Zay is going to lock that one up. That's a solo kill as Charm. Not going to be utilized as Yehu didn't find the angle between the minions on Gumiushi. And we are going to see Rel charge the Rift Herald towards the inner turret. So that's a fair bit of Herald value, actually, nope. as Teddy doing a lot of work on the carrier as well. I was pretty quickly in alone. You're not actually that tanky. And uh, yeah, you know, Rascal's been trying to find these angles all game. But the Ghost is such a powerful tool oh, in the 1v1 oh, against the Aatrox. And they're just barely out of range of these Qs. Oh, Red Rascal. Rascal. The game has been started up. T1 have the Banana Brush control. Oh, Prime that is imperative. To start laying down poke from. Well, we do have the Scryer's Bloom, but it's actually Zayas that takes that one away from Yehu, who misses the charm. This has just been so incredibly swift. It's okay, there's the steal. Sponge likely to die, but he's done his job. And there we go, lockdown does come on through. Fans pretty psyched about how DRX are playing this one out, at least in the Stealing Dragons aspect. Faker with a package to deliver. But unfortunately, DRX just not home to really pick the... Oh, never mind. Uh, they're, they're just in their, in their summer home in the mid lane. And uh, Rascal is going to suffer the wrath of the deliveries. Yep, great move by T1, able to turn the... Of the, of the Chemtech. Shouldn't you be the one that tells us that actually it's fine and it's a great dragon? No, that's not... <laughs> oh, that's not how that one works, is that's it? That's not how it works. Little Snowman Teddy is immediately going to cleanse, actually. Get out of that gold card. Cullen comes on through and does a lot of damage to Zayas here as they're still looking to chase after. There's the Flash Magnet Storm as Yahoo is going to get immediately CC'd as he dives in. And now Sponge is in trouble. Gumushi has red-white and that is a dangerous time. Teddy now below 100 health as the Destiny does come on in and Yahoo, he's not going to survive. The Destiny doesn't really do too much as far as gate value, but still T1 going to move towards the Baron as they love to do it 20 minutes into the game. Yeah. As far as steals are concerned, still slowed down by the sapling as Faker wanting to get him out of this pit. And his setup does have the extra movement speed as well. They do have the scuttle control, and Nature's Grasp says that there is no way they're stopping this Baron from going down. So T1, give him an inch, and they will take a Baron uh, every single time. Uh, that's just how it goes. Sponge and Teddy trying to convince Ona to leave the jungle. Oh, oh my god, this damage onto Teddy is getting a little bit silly. He's going to have to try and cull to stop them from doing any more damage to this inner turret as Ona suffers at least two-thirds of his health bar as all oh, the connection of the Moonshot. Yeah, Faker actually going to Eclipse first rather than the Malignant typically see. Oh, kind of nutty is. Okay, Zayas just going to avoid the charm and just wanders his way out. He's so incredibly fast. The Infernal Chains do not activate and they finally... Oh, never mind. Okay, there it is. The third Q going to come on through. It took four people, not the three they initially invested as now. Rascal could be in trouble. Good Bramble Smash, but there's the crash down onto Owner as well. Still, Moonlight... Sorry, the Moonshot... What? Earlier kind of takes away the pressure of... Uh, Wanted to secure all these dragons, they'll just lean top and said, look to take a tower. The problem is, I don't think the game necessarily gets better for them as it no. goes on. Um, so, sure, you know, by taking a dragon, you extend the game, you extend the soul timer, but Sponge can make it from there yeah. to the Baron with Flash and his W. But Kerry is looking. Yeah, they do have control vision in this area. Uh, Sponge finds himself a decent shattering strike. There's the package out from Faker. That is going to block them off entirely. And Sponge is thrown around like a ragdoll. There's the Moonlight Vigil. That's going to connect onto him as the Baron. Oh, that's going to be the cue to follow it up. As now Teddy looking for Faker here. He finds him, but I don't know whether he really wants to as the Rockets 
Not going to find the mark. Good sidestep there from Teddy as Destiny comes through just for the extra vision. The Mega Blast going gets them all the way away from this Baron. And Zayus, he turns up. That is going to be a gold card from a million miles away and a couple of screens. He is going to just transition into picking up the kill onto both of the damage dealers of DRX. I guess Rascal is going to be there, but he is not actually there. And uh, T1 just... But it was just so hard for him to find an avenue there. I'll think of raining down these rockets here as Pleta going to have to get out of there. Does flash. And DRX just, if they just stand here and take these rockets, it is just going to be really difficult to defend this. And the first it, Nexus turret is going to go down. One Siege minion remains, so they're not actually able to at all. DRX now just looking for Soul Point. If they can possibly get it. Uh, Zayas is going to say no, you're not allowed to have that as the uh, yeah, charm goes entirely wide and Zayas just does so much damage. There is the twisted advance forward from Ona and Redemption going to come on through as well. Faker collects the kill onto the Nami that was delivered and is pretty silly. Yeah, yeah, he has Infinity Edge as well. So, he, you know, you know if you take a lot of autos from him, it'll hit, but he just chunks now. Yeah, well, there's a Magnus Storm trying to do something here, but Ona not too worried about it, as we can see in Sponge. He's just going to be taken down pretty unceremoniously. Zayas now looking for Rascal here as well as he's tanking up the turret. And the Nexus is just going to go down T1 with a very comfortable 2-0 to move them towards playoffs here. And they are going to just take a look. These were some of the best highlights from all of the LCK spring matchups of the day. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.